Hey there, gang. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at families of functions and parent functions. Uh, this is something we talked a little bit about in Algebra 1, and we're just going to be reviewing and expanding some of that knowledge here. Uh, so remember, a family of functions or a family of graphs um, are just graphs that display similar characteristics, similar shapes, uh, similar in terms of uh, how many uh, roots they have, uh, whether they're continuous or discontinuous, similar domains and ranges, etc. A parent function is the simplest function of the family. And so we're going to go through a lot of different uh, function families here on this page and then talk about what the parent function for each of those families look like. We're going to start with linear functions. This is uh, what we looked at in our last unit of study. And this is the first big function family you talk about in Algebra 1. Linear functions, the parent function is just f of x equals x. And so, of course, that graphs a line. And so a linear function, the parent function, will look like this. It's a uh, line that has a slope of positive 1, and that passes through the origin. So its y-intercept is 0, 0. The domain of that parent function is all reals. The range is also all reals. And in fact, that's true for all diagonal lines. The x-intercept is at the origin, 0, 0, as is the y-intercept, 0, 0. Maximum number of roots and zeros. Remember, roots and zeros are where a line crosses the x-axis, so the x-intercepts. Um, a line is never going to have more than one x-intercept. Okay, so just one there. Uh, it's in behavior. This means what is the line doing on the far left and the far right um, of the graph? So as x gets larger, okay, as x gets larger, we say as x uh, approaches infinity, okay, that just means as x gets larger, f of x also gets larger for this parent function, okay, f of x also approaches infinity, is what this means. As x gets smaller, so as we go to the left, um, so we'll say as x approaches negative infinity, y values also get smaller, okay, so as we go towards the left in this graph, our y values get smaller as well. So this is the notation we use to describe the end behavior. Is this graph continuous or uh, discontinuous? Well, it's continuous because all the points are connected. Okay, so this is the uh, parent function for linear functions, and these are, these are some characteristics about that particular parent function. Moving on to absolute value, which is what we've been looking at so far in this unit. Uh, the parent function for an absolute value is f of x equals the absolute value of x. It's going to graph a v shape with a vertex at the origin. So it's going to look like this. The domain of this graph is all reals. The range of this graph is y is greater than or equal to 0. It has an x-intercept at the origin, and that's also its y-intercept. Maximum number of roots or zeros. This particular graph has only one uh, zero, but if we think about all the possibilities for um, an absolute value function, we could have absolute value functions that do this, okay, or this. So the maximum number is actually two. Absolute value graphs could have two uh, roots or zeros. For this graph, as x gets larger, y also gets larger. As x gets smaller, as we go towards the left, y still gets larger. So as x approaches negative infinity, as x gets smaller, y gets larger, okay? If we just look at the shape of this graph. This is also a continuous graph because all of our points are connected. <clears throat> the next function family, this is one we talked about towards the end of Algebra 1, and this will be coming up very soon uh, in Algebra 2, um, are the quadratic functions. So a quadratic function, its parent function is f of x equals x squared. It's going to graph a parabola, and the parent function is going to have a parabola with a vertex at the origin, and then points uh, here at 1, 1, and 2, 4, at negative 1, 1, and at negative 2, 4. So that's what uh, the quadratic parent function looks like. Similar to an absolute value, a lot of similar characteristics, its domain is all reals, its range is y is greater than or equal to 0, same x and y intercepts at the origin, the same is true about the maximum number of roots and zeros, the maximum number is 2, 
the end behavior is going to be the same as x gets larger, y also gets larger. As x gets smaller, as we go towards the left, y still gets larger. And this is also a continuous graph. Okay, moving on to a function family. We don't talk, we haven't talked a lot about uh, yet. We didn't talk a lot about last year, but you saw this a little bit um, when we did function families were the cubic functions, f of x equals x cubed. Um, a cubic function, its basic shape is going to be sort of this uh, S shape graph. So it's going to look a little bit like this for the parent function. This domain is all reals and this range is all reals x-intercept and y-intercept, still 0, 0. You're noticing kind of a pattern here. The maximum number of roots and zeros for a cubic function is 3. Okay, even though, again, this parent function doesn't have 3 roots or zeros, uh, we could have a cubic function uh, that did this. We could have one that crossed here and then crossed again here and then crossed again uh, here. So 1, 2, 3 is the maximum number of roots or zeros you could have for a cubic function. The end behavior for this graph, as x gets larger, y also gets larger. So as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches infinity. As x gets smaller, y also gets smaller. So the end behavior uh, for this function is similar to uh, our linear function. And this is a continuous graph. Okay, going to the back side, uh, these are some functions that we don't talk a lot about in Algebra 1, but you'll start seeing in Algebra 2 as we get more in-depth. The square root function, its parent function looks like this, f of x equals the square root of x. And its graph actually uh, looks sort of like half of a parabola. So we start at the origin, and then we kind of go this way, sort of a sideways parabola, but we don't go anywhere to the left, and that's because um, I can't plug in numbers that are less than zero underneath the square root sign. So we say that the domain of this graph are all x values that are greater than or equal to zero. Okay, we can't take the square root of a negative number, so therefore it's not in the domain. For this particular graph, the range then would be all y values greater than or equal to zero. x and y intercept, both at the origin. For a square root function, the maximum number of roots or zeros is 1. The end behavior for this graph, as x gets larger, y gets larger. And this is kind of a special case for the other side of the end behavior. As x gets smaller, we have to think about what is the smallest value x can be. Well, on this graph, the smallest value x can be is 0. So we would say as x approaches 0, what's happening to the y values? Well, the smallest that y can be for this particular graph is also 0. So the left side in behavior, uh, we put zeros in for both of these because this is the smallest x can be, and this is also the smallest y can become. And because I can trace my pencil along this graph without picking it up, this is also a continuous function. Okay, next we have the cube root function. The cube root function looks uh, like this. It's f of x equals the cube root of x. That's the parent function. Um, a cube root function uh, looks sort of uh, like a backwards uh, cubic function. It's still kind of got that S shape, but it's going to be uh, rotated uh, on its side. So it's going to look more like this, sort of an S shape. Okay, this is what our cube root function looks like. Its domain is all reals. Its range is all reals. You can plug negative numbers into a cube root. We can take the cube root of negative numbers. That's fine. Uh, X and Y intercepts, <clears throat> again, at the origin. The maximum number of roots or zeros a cube root function can have is 1. Okay, no matter how you shape it, none of these functions can cross uh, the x-axis more than once. Uh, for this graph, as x gets larger, y is getting larger. As x gets smaller, y is also getting smaller. And this is a continuous graph. 
Okay, three more we're going to look at. Uh, we have what is called reciprocal functions, or sometimes we call these rational functions. Uh, so for a reciprocal function, its parent function is f of x equals 1 over x. And its uh, graph is going to be a little bit strange looking. It's going to look like this. Okay, this is what the graph of a reciprocal or rational uh, function looks like. The domain of this graph is going to be all reals except for what's the one number we can't plug in uh, for x into a denominator? That would be 0. So it's all reals except x cannot be equal to 0 because if I plug that into uh, this parent function, I'd have 1 divided by 0, which is not allowed. Okay, we also have a restriction on our range. If we look at the graph of this, we can see that uh, the graph is not touching the y-axis, and so therefore x uh, is not 0 anywhere on this graph. That's how we described our domain. But the graph is also not touching the x-axis. Okay, It's coming very close to it over here and very close to it over here, but at no point will it touch the x-axis. So that also means that your y values can't be 0. They can be any other number besides 0. Think about that. If I plugged any number in for x I wanted, if I took 1 divided by that number, would I ever get 0? And the answer is no. I can't divide 1 by any number and get an answer of 0. That's just not possible. So therefore, my range of this graph are all y values except for 0. OK, for this graph, because uh, the graph is not intersecting the x or the y axis, there is no x-intercept and there is also no y-intercept. And therefore, uh, there's no roots or zeros on this graph. Now, there can be times where you have uh, an x-intercept on uh, rational functions, okay? Because, again, this is just the graph of the parent function. Uh, this graph can be uh, in a different place if we change this equation here. So the maximum number of x-intercepts you could ever have, though, is still 1 for a graph like this. The end behavior of this graph, as x gets larger, y is actually approaching 0. So we'll say as x approaches infinity, y approaches 0 on this side. Okay, it's never going to actually touch 0, but it gets really, really close to 0. As x gets smaller, what's happening to y? Well, it's still uh, getting very, very close to 0. So that's what the end behavior is doing. As x gets larger, y gets really close to 0 is what this means. As x gets really, really small, y still gets really, really close to 0. This is a discontinuous function. Okay, it's discontinuous because if I put my pencil um, over here and I start to draw, I have to pick up my pencil eventually to get to the other part of this function. So that's what makes this discontinuous. I can't uh, draw both of these uh, parts of this function without picking my pencil up off the paper. Uh, which brings us to this next vocabulary word that we're going to use for the last three function families, asymptotes. Asymptotes are sort of like boundary lines, okay, where uh, the graph doesn't uh, touch, and so we have two asymptotes for this graph. We have an asymptote at the y-axis, because y can't be equal to 0 for this graph, and so this is the vertical line x equals 0. We also have an asymptote at the x-axis, because x can't be equal to 0 on this graph. There's sort of a boundary line there, and that's the uh, line for y equals 0. Okay, two more function families we're going to talk about in this video. Exponential functions. Exponential functions, uh, the parent function is this. f of x equals 2 to the x power. So this is a type of function where your variable is the exponent. So uh, an exponential function, uh, that parent function is going to look like this. Okay, that's what the graph of the parent function looks like. The domain is all reals. The range are all y values that are greater than 0. Not greater than or equal to 0, but greater than 0. And think about that. If we take 2 to any power, positive or negative, we're never going to get a number that is actually 0. We'll get, we can get a really small number, like 1 1 millionth or 1 1 billionth, but we'll never actually get um, 
a number equal to 0 if we take 2 to a power. So therefore, because y can't be 0 on this graph, there's no x-intercept. Okay, we're never actually going to touch the x-axis. There is a y-intercept, though. We can see it right here. The y-intercept is at 0, 1. If I plug in 0 for x to this function, 2 to the 0 power is 1. The maximum number of roots or zeros you can have for a graph like this is 1. And then the end behavior. As x gets larger, y also gets larger. As x gets smaller, what's happening to y, your y values? They're getting really close to 0. This is a continuous graph. And we do have one asymptote on this graph. We have a boundary line here at the x-axis, which means that your asymptote is the line y equals 0. Okay, your graph is never actually going to touch a y value of 0, so therefore we call that a horizontal asymptote. Okay, the last type of function family that we're going to look at in this video are what are called logarithmic functions. This is something that we'll look at towards the end of the year. Uh, the parent function for a logarithmic is this, f of x equals log x. Don't worry about what log means. Okay, we'll get to that at the end of the year. I just want to bring it up very brief briefly right now. Um, a logarithmic function, its parent function is going to look like this. It's sort of going to be the opposite of an exponential. So just based on this graph here, hopefully you can see that the domain are all x values that are greater than 0. So we're not crossing the y-axis at all. It's just all positive x values. The range is all reals. The x-intercept here is 1, 0. But there's no y-intercept this time because we're not touching the y-axis. The maximum number of roots is 1. As x gets larger, y also gets larger. And then this, as x approaches 0, x is never going to cross that y-axis, so we say as x approaches 0, what happens to y? It gets infinitely smaller. So as x approaches 0, y approaches negative infinity. This is a continuous graph, and there is one asymptote, and that is at the y-axis, which is the vertical line x equals 0. Okay. I know that was a lot of information in this video. Um, I don't expect that you're going to remember every single thing that we talked about for all of these function families. The good news I have for you is there's only three that I really need you to focus on right now, and that um, is the first three, linear functions, absolute value, and quadratics. Okay, um, We'll be getting to quadratics here in the next uh, week or so uh, in class. So these are the three that I really want you to uh, focus on, and they're the ones you should be most familiar with because we did them all. Uh, We've done them all previously. Uh, as we start getting more in depth into Algebra 2, we'll start looking at these other families and start referring back to this sheet here. Um, but for right now, just focus on these first three. We're going to fill out the uh, second page of your notes in class the next time I see you. Until then, folks, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people. Take care.